Coming up on today's show, Mercedes-Benz walks the walk to prove that its EQXX concept can travel 1,000 kilometers, 621 miles on a single charge. Elon Musk tells a TED audience that he wishes that only he and JB Straubel had co-founded Tesla, and a study sponsored by Kia thinks it has the key to getting maximum range out of your EV. Classical music. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to TEN or Transport Evolve News. Thanks for tuning in. Before we get going, a quick reminder to make sure you've hit the subscribe button, dinged the bell, and set your alert preferences for this channel. Today's show is sponsored by the Electric Vehicle Association. Join up to support the electrification of transport today and get the help you need to finance your own EV or clean energy future. And if you're in the US, don't forget to put Fully Charged Live USA in your calendar. It's taking place in San Diego on September 10th and 11th this fall. So head to fullycharged.live forward slash US to find out more. And we hope to see you there. When an automaker unveils a new concept car at an auto show, there are no guarantees that said concept car, even if it has some form of drivetrain, is capable of being driven in the real world. But this week, we learned that one recent concept car from Mercedes-Benz, the Vision EQXX, is not only road legal, but capable of living up to the claims made of it when it was revealed earlier this year. A range in excess of 1,000 kilometers, 621 miles. The car, which previews a new production model from the company, was fully charged before having its charge port door sealed under scrutiny from an independent test organization. It then spent 12 hours and two minutes on the road, averaging normal road speeds and covering 626 miles, 1,008 kilometers in that time. It averaged 8.7 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, or 7.1 miles per kilowatt hour. Wowee! In the past few weeks, we've been following with interest as numerous Ford executives have shared their experiences with the last of the production validation F-150 Lightnings to roll off the production line. And now, Ford has announced the official start of deliveries in just two weeks' time. In a new teaser video shared to social media and press portals, Ford announced a special event will take place on April 26 at its REVC, or Rouge Electric Vehicle Center in Detroit, where the F-150 Lightning will be made. Some early Ford reservation holders are expected to attend, and we're hoping to cover the event too. As some of you might know, I am a reservation holder for the F-150 Lightning, and our team crew vehicle is expected to be made in a few weeks. So I'm going to admit, we're all a little excited here at the channel. This week, the TED conference took place in Vancouver, Canada, and as usual, there were plenty of high-profile attendees and speakers, including Bill Gates and Elon Musk. And in the same week that Elon Musk made a sudden hostile takeover bid for Twitter under the auspice of turning it into a platform where freedom of speech is placed above everything else, regardless of what's being said is true or false, Musk took to the stage in what was quite the candid appearance. Plenty was said, there's a great article on Wired if you're interested, but what got our attention in the EV world was Musk talking about a regret from the early days of Tesla. While history records that Musk didn't join Tesla until a year after its founding, Musk said on stage that he wished it was just he and J.B. Strabble alone who had started the company. It shows Musk is still very much aggravated by a past court ruling which lists Tesla as having five co-founders. Toyota has officially priced its BZ4X crossover ahead of a US market launch this spring. Based on an all-new platform shared with the Subaru Solterra, the BZ4X crossover is Toyota's first all-electric vehicle since the limited production IQ EV, or Scion EV as it was known in North America, and the second-generation Toyota RAV4 EV. Priced from $43,215, including mandatory fees, it has an EPA-approved range of 252 miles, 405 kilometers for the front-wheel drive variant, and 228 miles, 360 67 kilometers for the all-wheel drive variant. While priced competitively, the BZ4X will be at a disadvantage against some of its similarly priced rivals, since Toyota has just hit its 200,000 plug-in vehicle incentive limit, as defined by the US federal tax code. This means the $7,500 tax credit for buying a Toyota EV will be cut in half by the start of October. 
electric bus company and drivetrain specialist Proterra has long been one of the leaders of the electric bus space, with its vehicles popping up on city fleets around North America. But this week it unveiled a brand new variant of its most popular ZX5 transit bus, the ZX5 Max, that's capable of more than 300 miles in service. To date the company has offered multiple choices of battery capacities for its transit vehicles and the ZX5 is no different, with the 35 and 40 foot versions of the ZX5 being offered in 450 kilowatt hour battery pack or 675 kilowatt hour battery pack. They can now be specced with up to 492 kilowatt hours and 738 kilowatt hours respectively. This means its electric buses are now capable of escaping busy urban routes and going suburban and maybe even rural too. And that means fewer diesel buses. We've excitedly been covering the progress of Swedish Kenyan technology firm Opibus for several years now, documenting its lineup of electric buses, safari vehicles, and motorcycles. But this week, the company completed a successful rebranding, becoming Rome. It's a move that the company's founders say brings the firm closer to realizing its dreams of providing electric mobility and energy solutions for Africa. It will see the company split into four distinct units. Rome's electric conversion of safari, utility, and mining vehicles will become Muse, while its in-house charging network will be named Rome Charging. Meanwhile, Rome Energy will of course focus on energy system solutions and renewable energy generation, while Rome Motorcycles will focus on designing and building electric motorcycles specifically for life in Africa. Here's wishing the team all the best as Rome starts a brand new chapter in its life. Vietnamese startup Vinfast may be well known in its home nation, but it wasn't until late last year that it burst onto the global market with the promise of bringing the VF8 and VF9 electric vehicles to market in North America. Since then, the company hasn't disclosed much, save for announcing a location for its first US production facility last week. This week, it announced two interesting things. First, a breakdown of pricing for its two electric vehicles, and second, a deal with Electrify America for free charging. The VF8 will start from $40,700 US dollars, while the VF9 will start from $55,500 US dollars. That might sound like a good deal, but this doesn't include a mandatory battery pricing system, which could add upwards of a few grand to your ownership costs per year. As for the Electrify America deal, you'll get a discount on membership and two free charging sessions when you buy a VinFast EV. That's right, two. Kia has officially revealed details for the refreshed second generation 2023 Kia Nero EV this week. Along with some interesting tweaks to its design, it picks up some new tricks from its younger sibling, the EV6. Losing its rear quarter panel window and gaining a new rear vertical light cluster, the Nero EV also gets a new front end complete with redesigned lights, grille and bonnet. And under that new bonnet, you'll get the same small storage space frunk as found in the North American EV6. The aftermarket e Nero Frunk you can buy for the original E Nero is still larger, though, I think. And also, the charge port door on this new model gets moved to the center of the vehicle's nose. Inside, it gets the same dash as the EV6, which actually looks pretty darn sharp. But what's most important, other than a slight bump in range and increase to 85 kilowatt DC quick charging capability, is the optional inclusion of vehicle to load, meaning you can do what Kate Walton Elliott did with the EV6 and go camping with it. We're hoping to review one as soon as we can. The poster child of the EV supercar world, the incredible multi-million dollar Rimats Nevera, has officially completed the last of its winter testing ahead of its planned customer deliveries this spring. As is usually the case, Rimats has furnished us with some glorious video footage of the car power sliding on icy test tracks, and according to the company's CEO, Mate Rimats, the car performed exceptionally well in temperatures down to minus 15 degrees Celsius, 5 degrees Fahrenheit. With the 120 kilowatt hour 69 60 cell battery pack, a sprint time of 1.85 seconds, and a 0 to 100 miles per hour, that's 161 kilometers per hour time, of 4.3 seconds, the Nevera and its 1.4 megawatt drivetrain are unlikely to be driven in anger in the real world on roads like those it just tested on. But it's a real testament to Rimatz's engineering prowess that a car that powerful can behave that gracefully in ice and snow.
One of the biggest criticisms of electric vehicles today is that they often use cobalt in their battery packs, a metal that can actually improve battery performance, but isn't always sourced ethically and responsibly, and in some cases can be traced back to slave and child labor in Africa. It's for this reason and many others that there's a race to develop cobalt-free cells for EVs, and why some companies like Tesla already make cobalt-free batteries for some of their vehicles. Now there's a new company to add to the list, New Zealand firm Ubico. It specializes in off-road capable all-wheel drive two and four wheelers for use on farms, in recreational settings, and in military applications. And it's just announced a new partnership with battery specialist Chemex to develop a sustainable, ultra-safe, high energy battery pack that's cobalt free. The company says current cobalt free chemistries aren't energy dense enough for its applications, but it says that Chemex, which uses AI to design new cell chemistries, has already cracked the code for sustainable, high energy, cobalt free cylindrical cells. We'll be watching this one carefully, and of course, we'll keep you up to date with any progress. Coming up next, short shorts. But first, this is the bit where I remind you that tea is here because of the kind donations of people like you. We do make white label content and do some third party production work and YouTube ad revenue helps. But the lion's share of our income and thus everyone's salary here comes from those of you who support us through Patreon, YouTube, channel memberships, Ko-fi and our swag store. We're always welcoming of new supporters, so follow the links in the show notes to join on up. And if you're not supporting us financially, just know that watching our shows, sharing them and engaging in the comments really does help. On to the short shorts. Renault has paused production of its brand new Magan E-Tech electric hatchback due to part supply issues. Like Volkswagen, it sources some of its parts for the Magan E-Tech from Ukraine, and the illegal invasion of Ukraine by Russia has halted parts shipments. EVSE company Wallbox, EVSE is a fancy way of saying charging station, has announced the start of construction at its Arlington manufacturing facility in Texas. The facility will be home to Wallbox's North American charging station production lines. Battery specialist Envision AESC has announced it's investing $2 billion into a new battery facility in Kentucky that will manufacture upwards of 30 gigawatt hours of EV battery cells per year. The factory is expected to supply Mercedes-Benz with cells for use in the EQS SUV. Community scooter share programs are a great way of helping people to leave their cars at home and seek alternative, greener methods of transport. But as the Brussels Times reports this week, nearly all of Brussels Go sharing electric mopeds were hacked and stolen recently after thieves offered online courses on how to joyride them. Electric truck startup Bollinger originally had plans to bring its B1 and B2 electric pickup and SUV to market, but then shifted to designing an electric commercial vehicle platform instead. Con Edison has just been named its first customer, and it will end up with a Class 3 walk-in van for the utility. The Australian government is coming under increasing pressure after Prime Minister Morrison announced it would funnel more money into fossil fuel companies while ignoring the EV industry. Some states have incentive programs, but nationwide leadership is lacking. Indian automaker Mahindra has come a long way in its EV journey since I visited its production facilities in Bengaluru three years ago. This week, it teased the interior of three new upcoming electric vehicles it plans to launch this July. This is one worth watching. Ontario, Canada is exploring the possibility of allowing utility companies to introduce a new overnight tariff designed to encourage EV adoption and overnight EV charging. Rates could be as low as two and a half Canadian cents per kilowatt hour if approved. General Motors has announced a new multi-year agreement with Glencore to supply it with cobalt for use in its next generation of Ultium-based EV battery packs. While the value of the deal is not announced, they will help production of all of GM's upcoming models. The City Council of Los Angeles has voted unanimously to support the transition of its city fleet to electric vehicles. The electric vehicle master plan will require the city's Department of General Services to electrify six thousand vehicles, including emergency service vehicles. Tata Motors has proposed it acquires a former Ford production facility in Gujarat, India, where it says it will make a brand new electric vehicle model. Its goal is to produce upwards of two lakh vehicles there. That's 200,000 vehicles per year by 2026. Following on from its previous reveals of various 
Sphere Concept EVs, Audi has announced it will introduce a new member of the family next week called the Urban Sphere. It was originally due to debut at the Beijing Auto Show, but Covid had other plans. This same week, as it officially confirmed the end of production for its Insight Hybrid, Honda has teased two new electric sports cars as part of an announcement that it will invest an additional 40 billion US dollars in R&D over the next 10 years. One of those cars looks like an NSX. The state of Washington has decided that the best way to figure out how to get people to transition to electric vehicles is to study those who use gasoline more than most. It wants to figure out how to get gasoline super users to transition to EVs and then take it from there. Fisker has announced a brand new head of operations in India in the city of Hyderabad. This will help the facility to develop both vehicle software as well as continue virtual vehicle development and spearhead an eventual Indian market launch of the Fisker lineup. Tesla has announced a new all-wheel drive standard range configuration of its Tesla Model Y and has listed the starting price as being $60,000 US dollars. Unfortunately, though, there is a bit of a catch. It will initially only be available to Tesla employees as they refine the vehicle. Toyota has confirmed that it intends to bring its crown nameplate to the electric age, replacing the sedan that it's had for more than 67 years of sales with an SUV. It will be available with electric, hybrid and plug-in hybrid drivetrain options with the EV due to launch in 2024. Volkswagen has made the first step to making leasing an EV possible entirely online. It's moved its ID4 and ID5 leasing systems to the virtual system. While the automaker says dealers will remain part of the entire experience, you will actually only use your dealership for service and or repairs. Electric boat manufacturer Exshore has just closed its latest funding round with a total of $50 million to help it ramp up its electric boat production and expand its future R&D efforts. Its first electric boat began production in March and sales are promising. Tesla has officially trademarked the term Cyber Backpack, hinting that it might end up making a Cybertruck themed Cyber Backpack. A Tesla fan and YouTuber recently showcased their own custom Tesla backpack and said they wanted Tesla to make them. Nissan has officially announced the 2023 update to its Leaf lineup. The car gets the same styling tweaks as its European market siblings, but Nissan has slashed the models available. You can now choose from just a shorter range Leaf S or a longer range Leaf SV+. Frankly, it feels like this is the end for this particular nameplate. Tesla's largest battery project to date in Moss Landing Station, California, remains offline months after it was shut down due to a fire. Authorities have already said that Tesla's power packs were not to blame for the blaze, but ongoing investigations continue. Setting up an EV charging infrastructure across rural parts of Australia is no mean feat, but charging provider EV has just been chosen to deploy a set of rapid charging stations across rural parts of the state of Victoria. Hopefully other Australian states will follow, but I should note that the new stations will be capped at 50 kilowatts for now, presumably due to infrastructure constraints. A Trove Motor, an e-mobility company based in India, has announced its intent to build a compact electric sports bike. It's shown one silhouetted picture so far, but teases a 40 kilowatt motor and lots of onboard tech. So we'll tell you more when we have it. A fully autonomous solar electric boat called the Mahi 2 has just successfully crossed the Atlantic Ocean. While the tiny craft is not large enough to carry passengers or cargo, it does showcase a future where solar ships carry our goods around the world powered by sunlight. The city of Vancouver in BC, Canada wants to propose an annual 10 thousand Canadian dollar fine for gas stations and parking lots that operate without on-site EV charging provision. This would certainly help incentivize companies to offer charging, but still has plenty of opposition. Hyundai has announced it intends to establish a US production facility where it will build both electric vehicles and electric vehicle battery packs. The facility is part of a massive investment into US production by the company, and it says it will pick a site by the end of this year. At this week's New York Auto Show, a new hypercar made debut that aims to be the new hotness in the EV world. Called the Deus Viana, it features a 1.6 megawatt drivetrain and a sub two second sprint time. It's got a fairly conventional front end, but a very unconventional rear. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. 
Volkswagen's MEB platform, aka its modular toolkit platform, was designed from the ground up to power a variety of different vehicle designs and segments, as well as offer a range of drivetrain and battery pack choices. It currently underpins vehicles from Volkswagen like the ID3 through ID6, Audi models like the Q4 e-tron, and vehicles from other VAG brands like Škoda and Seat. But to date, the largest capacity battery pack offered by any of those vehicles is 77 usable kilowatt hours. This results in some usable but not range-topping performance across all models that use the MEB platform. But this week, Volkswagen announced it's expanding its MEB platform to include a larger capacity battery pack capable of up to 700 kilometers, 435 miles on the optimistic WLTP test cycle, as well as offer up to 200 kilowatts of DC quick charging capability. As usual, when we know more, we will share. And finally, what do you listen to when you're driving your EV? If indeed you listen to anything at all. I'll listen to anything from EDM through to jazz and classical, and anything from NPR through to a good audiobook. I'm currently halfway through the Expeditionary Force series right now. But a study sponsored by Kia now suggests that if you want maximum EV range from your car, there's only one logical choice classical music. It examined the impact that music can have on your driving style and concluded that if you want the very best range per charge, you should be listening to something classical rather than any other genre. To be honest though, this is hardly surprising. I mean, cows on our farm that were exposed to classical music produced more milk than those that were exposed to something else. And as a former professional classical oboist, I can tell you that the right classical music makes me gooey. Thomas Tallis's Speminalium, anyone? But well, I also specialised in contemporary performance while at college, and some of the pieces I recorded for CD, I wouldn't cast them as chill classical music. If you want to decide for yourself, I'll link to some of my performances in the description. And on that note, we are done for the day. But before I go, I would like to extend a huge thank you to the Electric Vehicle Association for sponsoring today's show. They have been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967 and firmly believe our future depends on us making the switch to clean green electric cars today. The EVA can help you find someone near to you that can help you make the switch to electric. It can help you become an EV educator, then it can point you in the direction of monthly meetups for like-minded EV fans. And if you do become a member, you'll gain access to a a clean energy and EV loan program set up between the EVA and the Colorado Clean Energy Credit Union. You can find out more by heading to electricauto.org. Don't forget to hit subscribe and the bell for this channel and for our second channel, Transport Evolve Take Two. And if you are not already a channel member or a Patreon supporter, please consider becoming one. Or you can send us a tip through Ko-fi or indeed buy something from our cool swag store. And if you liked what you saw today, why not consider adding a super thanks to your comment? It is super easy to do so and it also helps our channel grow. We will be back soon with more awesome content, but until then, enjoy your weekend, and as always, keep evolving.